get any slept for a couple of hours. I remember, I remember calling the nurse because I couldn't see him. I couldn't see his chest moving. <laughs> they couldn't find anything, any reason. We got home to a frozen, empty house. We didn't answer the phone, and then the arguments started. A storm of grief. On the fourth day, we had a huge fight. And the strangest thing happened. Um, I'd taken an alarm clock to the hospital. I, I, I hadn't unpacked or anything. We'd left everything by the front door. And suddenly, right in the middle of this argument, um, the alarm clock went off. I hadn't, I hadn't wound it or set it. And we just stopped fighting. We just stopped and listened, and it was like, um, it was like he, it was like he wanted us to stop shouting at each other, like, like he was there. <laughs> I just think there is very little actual fact in our lives at the moment, very little reality. This is real, our conversation is real, but what's gonna happen in an hour or so? You will have your version of events, I will have mine, and they will both be different. There will be a chaos of uh, memories, misinterpretations, lateral connections, and they will all be a fantasy. In fact, everything that you hope for and dream about, that's all a fantasy. And the layers of associations and connections that every second your brain is making as we navigate this world, it is all just a fantasy. Yet it seems as real as the news on a screen, uh, the sound of this table, uh, the people we love. And that's why I think it's very important to deal with this definition of fantasy in our lives. Do you? Yes, I do. I know you don't, Grant, but I think that the world is big enough to accommodate both of us. Wow, that's nice. Oh, that's cool. Cool. Oh, it's it's just us. It's a bit of cotton frost. Yeah, it's a bit of needle. Yes, it's all right. It's all right. <sighs> I haven't woken up yet.